Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Jenna Slow. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Police patrols are stepped up as Hong Kong gets ready for the handover anniversary. The French government considers all options to end violent protests in Paris. And the U.S. Supreme Court shoots down affirmative action for university admissions. Security has been stepped up as Hong Kong prepares to observe the 26th anniversary of the handover. The occasion will be marked by travel and shopping perks for residents. Police have beefed up security on the eve of the 26th anniversary of the handover. The force announced that more officers, including tactical squad members who are still undergoing training, will be deployed to step up stop and search checks. Some marine officers will also help to conduct what the force described as high-profile patrols. Security has already been tightened at Golden Bohemia Square in Wan Chai, where the flag raising ceremony will be held tomorrow morning. In addition, officers have been deployed at the nearby convention and exhibition center. For residents, the anniversary means free rides on the light rail and MTR buses, trams, and on certain ferry routes. Several restaurants will be offering discounts. Another highlight is the start of the two month Hong Kong shopping festival organized by the Retail Management Association. Over 150 brands and 6,000 retail stores will offer discounts and free items worth $150 million. A three-day event held by the Hong Kong Celebration Association kicked off at Victoria Park in Causeway Bay this morning. Liaison Office Director Zheng Yanxiong expressed a light to see the return of what he called the once familiar and adorable Hong Kong. He said the city will never again head in the wrong direction or be misused. Today marks the third anniversary of the implementation of the national security law. The government said since then, Hong Kong society has returned to stability but warned the public to remain vigilant against anti-China activists spent on disturbing the peace. The Privacy Commissioner said data leaks in the first half of the year jumped by 20 percent from the last six months of 2022. There were 55 cases between January and June. Privacy Commissioner Ada Chong said leaks could affect any organization, big or small, because of human error or cyber attacks. Her office has released new guidance on how to handle data breaches. Steps and recommendations are provided for firms to respond and manage leaks effectively and promptly. After running for 25 years, New World First Bus will merge with City Bus. Regular passengers will start noticing changes to the buses from tomorrow but it will take some weeks before only city bus vehicles will be seen on the roads. Chloe Wong reports. Workers have begun removing New World First Bus logos ahead of tomorrow's merger with city bus. It will take a couple of months before the makeover is complete. New World First Bus staff will have a city bus logo attached to their staff cards until they get new uniforms. All they have been Roger Ma, the operations general manager of City Bus, said the merger of the two subsidiaries of Bravo will provide more flexibility on routes and frequencies. He said amalgamating routes that have similar destinations could increase surface frequency, resulting in a win-win situation for passengers. Ma pledged to ensure quality, noting that there is stiff competition for public transport services. New World First Bus will bid farewell with number 9706, leaving Changsha Wan for Aberdeen at 1.30 a.m. The first New World Bus to switch to City Bus will be number N8P, which departs from Xiuxia Wan at 4 a.m. for Wan Chai. Chloe Wong, HKIBC. 
The first batch of cars to travel to Guangdong without applying to be part of a regular quota will set off tomorrow. The northbound travel scheme allows private cars from the SAR to drive to the neighboring province via the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. About 4,400 motorists applied for permits and 440 received them. 130 of the permit holders will set off tomorrow. Ringo Lee, president of the Automobile Association, said some applicants were unsuccessful because they failed vehicle exams or their cars were multicolored, which is not allowed across the border. Overseas, French President Emmanuel Macron has held a crisis meeting with his advisers as violent protests escalated in Paris and other cities after a policeman shot and killed a teenager. Ministers condemn the violence as unjustifiable and are considering all options to restore order. Sachin Katfi reports. Protests gripped Paris for a third night after a police officer shot and killed Nahel M., a 17-year-old boy of Algerian and Moroccan descent at a traffic stop in the French capital. The officer who opened fire apologized to the victim's family as he remains in custody on charges of voluntary homicide. On the streets, his colleagues faced a tense standoff with protesters who hurled firecrackers. Despite the beefed up security, the violent protests continued. Cars and dumpsters were torched and streets were littered with debris as the violence continued. There were cases of vandalism and looting across Paris. Shops and business establishments were ransacked. Petrol stations were not spared. A shoe store in the city centre was looted. Earlier, Nahel's mother led a march demanding justice for her son. Thousands joined the relatively peaceful rally. The killing shocked the country. This woman said people of colour are now scared for the safety of their children. Others accused the French police of brutality and discrimination against blacks and Arabs. More than 600 people have been arrested and 200 officers were injured in the violence. Sachin Katpi, HKIBC. A debate is raging in the United States after the Supreme Court ruled that race can no longer be considered a factor in university admissions. The landmark ruling reverses a decades-old policy known as affirmative action, which gives preference to women and ethnic minorities, especially in higher education, Asam Khan reports. This was how U.S. President Joe Biden reacted when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down affirmative action in university admissions, declaring race cannot be a factor. Is this a rogue court? This is not a normal court. The ruling will force tertiary institutes to look for different ways to achieve diverse classes. The decision was driven by the top court's six conservatives, including Clarence Thomas, only the nation's second black justice, who himself admitted to benefiting from affirmative action. The three liberal justices dissented. Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latina to serve in the highest court in the land, said the ruling rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress. Biden slammed the decision and vowed to fight it. Many people wrongly believe that affirmative action allows unqualified students, unqualified students to be admitted ahead of qualified students. This is not, this is not how college admissions work. Rather, colleges set out standards for admission, and every student, every student has to meet those standards. Some students from Harvard supported Biden. It feels like the court has been within a sort of trend of taking rights away lately. Um, and it sort of feels like this may be another one of those types of blows. Others welcome the ruling. Affirmative action is a well-intentioned idea that is poorly executed in reality. It is my hope to see a renewed college admission system that recognizes and rewards the multifaceted talents 
and diverse perspective that each individual can bring to the table. While the ruling forces institutes to change their plans to achieve diversity, the details remain to be seen. Azam Khan, HKIBC. Hong Kong stocks edged marginally lower today on the last session of the first half of the year, reflecting the slide since February. The Hang Seng Index lost over 4 percent in the six months to June, making it one of the worst global performers, Chloe Fong reports. The Hang Seng Index dipped on the last session of a bearish quarter. Despite climbing above the key 19,000-point level once, it ended the day flat. Between April and June, the benchmark lost a total of 1,483 points, or 7.2 percent, down from the end of March, making it the worst quarter since borders reopened. The loss for the first six months of the year was 864 points, or over 4 percent. Investors had two words to describe the trend, very disappointing, especially after prices skyrocketed at the end of January when the index jumped to around 22,700 points. Analysts blamed the slump on the banking crisis in the United States and Europe, along with rising interest rates and China's faltering recovery. One of the key points is because the economic rebound is less than forecast, if we divide the total uh, stock market into two groups, one is with AI, one is without AI. <laughs> so you can see that US, you can see Japan, Taiwan, Korea, they are in the AI group, mm. so they outperform. But for Hong Kong, we, we have a less robust economic growth in China. We have some um, volatility uh, in U.S. and we do not have the AI investment frame. Surging oil prices benefited energy giant PetroChina, which was the best performer in the past six months, rising nearly 52 percent. Electric vehicle makers were boosted by national support, with BYD company's valuation jumping nearly threefold during the period. But property shares dived because of declining prices and a weak market. CG Services and Country Garden both lost a whopping over 40 percent in the first half of 2023. Looking ahead, investors predicted that Chinese stimulus measures in the second half of the year will boost Hong Kong stocks. Clay Fong, HKIBC. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index ended the day down 17 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent was down $2, Alibaba was down a dollar, while Meituan was also down by $2.40. AIA was down 60 cents, while HSBC was up 15 cents. To the foreign exchange against the Hong Kong dollar, the euro is at 8.52, the pound's at 9.92, and the Australian dollar is at 5.19. Over in the UK market, the FTSE 100 is currently up by 52 points. China's factory activity remained in contraction for a third straight month, adding pressure on the authorities to do more to shore up growth. The Official Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, edged up from 48.8 in May to 49 in June. The non-manufacturing PMI, which measures business sentiment in the services and construction sectors, fell from 54.5 in May to 53.2 in June, the weakest reading this year. The latest statistic points to a patchy recovery in the world's second largest economy as growth momentum faltered. Now for the weather on the handover anniversary. Mainly cloudy tomorrow with a few showers and isolated thunderstorms. It will be very hot with the mercury hitting 32 degrees. Showers and thunderstorms in the following two days. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world.
That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Jenna Slow. Good evening.